So what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some more work on the STI over here. We're finally going to be painting the engine bay, making it look a lot nicer and actually paint matching everything to the same color as the car. Because if you guys have ever like taken apart the front end of your car, you know that Subaru did not do a good job at fully painting everything. Now I was talking about doing some like weird crazy color on the car or something like that. Uh, I kind of decided against that and we're just going to end up doing World Rally Blue. So Grim Speed makes like a, a spray paint version of World Rally Blue and it's pretty close. I sprayed a sample on the frame and I'll show you guys what that looks like, but we're gonna be going a little bit further. We're gonna be doing a primer and then we're gonna be doing the actual paint. We're gonna be sanding it down a little bit just to make it look like as nice and as smooth as we can. Cause that's what we want. So let me show you guys like this little sample of this like Grim Speed paint that I, that I came across. And I'll show you guys just how like closely it color matches the actual world rally blue. We're gonna end up sanding it down anyways. Uh, we have a little bit of prep work that we have to do to pull more stuff out of the engine bay before we start painting, but it should look a thousand times better by the time we have this done. So here is the like little spot of the Grim Speed World Rally Blue that I sprayed on here just to like paint test it to see how it would look. And it actually looks pretty good. It's actually pretty close to the factory World Rally Blue that we have on the car. We have a lot to paint though. We have like this whole front section up here. Uh, the hood latch needs to come out because we're doing hood pins up there. Hopefully I don't install those backwards. The ECU wiring harness up here needs to at least be pushed through to the other side so that way we can get it out. I have decided I am gonna leave this fuse box up here. It just makes a little bit more sense to keep it up in the engine bay. This fuse box controls like all of the body harness stuff up here for like headlights, auxiliary lighting, horns, sensors, other body harness things. And it just, it makes more sense to just keep that fuse box than it does to completely remove it. Um, I do have it unbolted right now just so we can move it around, clean behind it, paint areas that are around it. But I wanna get the engine bay as much prepped as we can. So that way when the new motor comes, we can just ploop it right in. So first step, I'm gonna push this thing forward, get that ECU out. So check this out. This is actually kind of cool. Uh, pulled the heater core out of the way. Uh, it's pretty much just, well, the fan that uh, actually blows all the air in. But we have all of our ECU wiring exposed now. And I can see all the way through the engine bay up there through that little bit of hole. But that's a lot of wiring that we're gonna have to be digging through uh, when it comes time to start wiring in the new ECU. So not looking forward to all of that, but we got the ECU out and here it is. So this is the ECU that powers everything, absolutely everything inside of your car. You got a ton of connectors over there. You got one down on the bottom, but this is this is the brain, the brain of your car. So now that we have this out of the way, actually I should probably keep this and hold on to this for now. So we'll put this in like a somewhat safe spot, like right there on the Rhino ramp. So now that the wiring harness going into the car is actually out of the way, uh, frees up a little bit more room in here to be able to paint some stuff. So next thing up, push this guy back in the garage. Uh, I'm a thoroughly clean absolutely everything before we start spraying some primer down. Just kidding, I still need to take this hood latch out. So we'll push this back in the garage. I'll take the hood latch out. Then we'll start cleaning everything down. Uh, we'll spray a coat of primer over everything that needs to be painted. We're not gonna repaint absolutely everything, only the areas that need to be painted. Uh, just because, I mean, we could redo everything if we wanted. We'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. So I started off just by like hand cleaning everything and realized a pressure washer would probably be the best way to do it. I also cleaned inside of the transmission as you guys saw. So like 99% of the dirt and dust is off of here. So I'm gonna start uh, just on this like main frame up here to test all this out. Uh, we're gonna do like a coat of primer. We'll let it dry for like 10, 15 minutes. We'll come back out, we'll sand it down a little bit once it's actually dry and not tacky. Uh, once it's sanded down, then we'll swap over and we'll try this actual uh, World Rally Blue paint. So this is the primer I'm using. It's just like a self etching primer. I figured it would work best on metal. So let's give it a try. Like I said, in many videos before, not a body mechanic. I've never really done body work before. So not quite sure how, or paint work for that. This is the first time I've tried paint like to actually make it look kind of pretty. Do I have clear coat? I think I have clear coat. Oh, all right, keys, you can just fall down there. What is this? No, no clear coat. It's all right, don't need it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, no clear coat. So uh, let me, let's just do this. Let's just do the thing. Let's just do the stuff. Let it dry and then we'll sand it down. Uh, I think I hit right there a little bit more. So uh, let's do a time lapse and literally watch paint dry. 
So this DTM, or this paint, or this primer, Jesus, the primer dries pretty quick. Since the primer dried so quick, um, we're actually already ready to sand it. It's only been like 10 minutes, so pretty good primer. Uh, the heat gun definitely probably helped. So I'm gonna go over this with two grits of sandpaper. We're gonna start off with 600 to smooth everything out. Once we get it nice and like smooth, then we'll swap over to a thousand as like the finishing. Uh, once it's done being like super smooth, then we'll clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. We'll grab the World Rally Blue paint and we'll start painting it. We'll start painting it. Make it look good. Make it look super good. I should have bought a sanding block. So the primer went the primer went down pretty nice. There's a couple troublesome areas that actually had like rough spots. As you can see, like right there had some high spots. Uh, high spots right down here. There's a couple high spots like up here, up here, and then going down on the other side of the frame rail, a couple more. They're all like perfectly smooth now. This piece, there was like a weird high spot right here, but got rid of it. There used to be one right there also, but that's cleaned up. So now that this has been prepped, cleaned, uh, primered, sanded, let's start laying some blue paint down and uh, see how this looks because I'm a little bit excited for this part. A little bit excited. So I'm gonna heat up the paint a little bit just to make it a little a little happier so it's not super cold. Uh, I think we're gonna do this in a couple light coats instead of just going like all out heavy. So I think I'm gonna tackle this the same way I do headlights. So we'll start out by doing a couple light coats and then uh, move to a heavier coat after we've gotten like a couple base coats down and uh, see how it likes it. All right, I'm not gonna lie, that actually looks pretty good for a first coat. Uh, wow, that actually looks so good for a can of spray paint. Holy hell, all right. Uh, we're gonna let this dry for maybe 10, 15 minutes and we'll come back, we'll do one more coat. And then I think that should be good for that front end, but Jesus, that blue looks good. That looks so good. Like Grim Speed, I am impressed. That is a perfect color match of World Rally Blue and a can of spray paint. This is only the first coat. Oh my God, I might go buy some clear coat, just put some clear coat over that, just to make it look super nice. But that looks so much better than the factory, like dull, like crappy blue. I might buy another can and do the entire engine bay versus just the spots that needed touched up because that looks oof, oof. So uh, I'm gonna let this dry for like 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. I don't know. I'll come back when it's not like super wet. Uh, we'll do one more coat, we'll let that one dry, and then we'll move on to a couple smaller areas to see which, like, how they get touched up also. But like, Jesus, dude, I am impressed. That is actually really good. That is a really good color. That is a really good paint match. So the paint is pretty much dry at this point up here and I'm pretty impressed with the outcome of it. Uh, there are a couple spots where if I wanted to go a little bit heavier, I could hide a little bit of the old marks behind there, but I mean, there's gonna be a bumper over this and a radiator there, so I'm not too concerned about it, but that blue looks so good. So I went ahead, uh, masked off the fender, masked off this area, there's a mat, masked off this fender over here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna paint some of these other areas up in here, so we'll just time-lapse through that. Uh, I am curious to see how vibrant the blue actually looks inside of the bay after I get some of these area, other areas hit, but you can definitely see the difference in color here. This is the factory blue, and that's the blue that we just put on there. So I'm gonna get some of this stuff painted and we'll see how the bay looks, but I'm super stoked to see the actual outcome of how this paint looks. Like this paint, I would suggest this paint for anyone who has a World Rally blue car and needs like some touch-up paint like this. This stuff, is the go-to. I am so pleased with the way that this is turning out. It is in, the engine bay looks so much better, so much better. If you guys are content, if you guys pull your engine to build your engine or anything like that, and you have like a World Rally Blue car or another similar car, if you have any car, Paint your engine bay, touch it up. 
It's the small things. It's the small things that'll make you happy, I promise. So I might end up putting a clear coat down on top of all of this, but it just, it looks so much better. I still have one more coat to do over here on the battery tray and the strut tower because I, I completely screwed that strut tower before uh, when I was doing fuel lines and having to pull out the Perrin master cylinder brakes because I had to cut it off with a hacksaw. Uh, you can kind of see some of the damage left over right back there. Um, no biggie, no biggie. We're repainting everything. We're making it look nice, but it looks immaculate. It looks literally a thousand times better inside of this engine bay. Uh, I do need to go in here, clean up the subframe a little bit. I got some overspray on the fender liners, but I really don't care because I am going to be replacing the fender liners because when we had the bags on the car, it completely, completely demolished the fender liners. We're going to do new fender liners up in the front, so I don't really care about any overspray that actually gets on them. But this is, you guys, it's the small things like this that just make your car stand out so much more. When you put in like all this small attention to detail, oh, I totally got overspray on the, oh, it's okay. I can get that off the acetone later. But it's like all the little small things that just, they really make the car stand out. I'd love to do the back firewall and everything like that, but I just, I don't want to mess with brake lines. I don't have to pull any brake lines, move anything like that. Uh, the brake system we are keeping in place because we are going to be running ABS in the car. So I don't want to have to pull brake lines, undo them all, uh, put them back in later. So the paint back there isn't going to be as like pretty as it is like up here and in all these other areas, but that's all right. I can live with that. So uh, over here, essentially what I'm doing is I'm going in with that etching primer that we talked about earlier. I'm putting a coat of this down. I'm going over it with 600 grit sandpaper, then a thousand grit sandpaper. I'm getting it like nice, smooth, as smooth as I can. And then uh, from there, just doing a couple light coats, letting it dry. I'm using the heat gun to kind of accelerate the curing process, but going over, doing like a couple passes, letting it dry, a couple passes, let it dry. I'm doing like three or four coats on everything. And it's just, oh my God, I cannot, I cannot. I literally cannot. So for the most part, I'm pretty happy with the amount of blue that we have in here. I think for the most part, all the paint is pretty much corrected at this point. So we're gonna do a layer of clear coat over all of this now, just to make sure that it stays protected and uh, doesn't doesn't get like completely wrecked and damaged as I like work in the engine bay and all this other stuff. So we ran to Walmart, grabbed like a can of can of open the open the bag, open the bag. We grabbed a can of clear coat, two uh, X ultra cover. So uh, I think the way I'm going to do this clear coat is uh, go over, do like one light coat first, just to get a base down. And then once we have the base down, go back over, do a heavier coat. And that should protect all of our new blue because I am, I want to keep this like as blue as I can, because this blue, that blue, that's so blue. Are you guys tired of watching paint dry yet? Because I am actually a little bit tired of watching paint dry, but I'm going to be honest, the it looks so good. Like it is the smallest of changes in the engine bay, but just repainting the engine bay. Just, oh, mwah, tray magnifique. Like, oh, let me show you guys. Because you guys are going to like this too. As you guys remember, it was a hot mess of like, uh, like a lot of different colors. There was like primer, there was bare metal, there was blue, black, grease, dirt, dust, absolutely everywhere. I cleaned out the transmission the best I could also while I had it out there and I was spraying it with the pressure washer. Uh, not too bad, but I do think I can do a little bit better to get that. But like, look at how clean the frame rails look. Look at how clean the battery tray and everything looks. It's so much better. I, I love it. So I did get the body harness put back in and I did get the fuse box bolted back down. Uh, we are gonna end up using this fuse box. It just makes life a lot easier. It's already formed to the engine bay also. So it already has a clean look. I'm not gonna worry about trying to relocate all that stuff, but simple stuff, the simple little things like cleaning the engine bay, painting it, getting all the grease off. I cleaned the subframe. I cleaned the power steering rack, transmission. Everything is nicely, freshly painted. As you guys see here, like this is like the World Rally Blue Subaru does. Not bad, pretty good paint. Like, well, it's Subaru paint, so it's not that good, actually. I take that back. But like up here, that's some good paint. That's, a, that's some good paint. I'm happy with that. For never doing uh, paint work, pretty happy with the outcome. That's pretty smooth. No bubbles, no gouges, no nothing. Uh, cool, dry to the touch. I did clean everything with isopropic alcohol uh, in between painting sessions just to make sure there's no contamination or anything like that on there. But... You guys, I'm so happy with this. So overall, I'm super pumped with the way this engine bay came out. 10 out of 10, highly recommend Grim Speed spray paint. But uh, that's all I got for you guys on this one. It wasn't too much of an exciting video. Uh, I do have some exciting stuff that we're gonna be doing tomorrow. Well, tomorrow for me, like two days for you guys. We're gonna be flocking the dash. 
We're actually flocking the dash. I got the I got the dash flock it kit on Amazon. Uh, so we're gonna learn how to flock a dash. We're not gonna put it back in, but we are gonna flock it. I need to do it tomorrow. Let it sit for two days before we clean it and wipe it down and everything like that. So look forward to a dash flocking video. But if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue. Like literally everything we just painted. Literally everything. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. No idea which one I'm going to put it in quite yet, but hit that button. And with that though, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.